يستري ويفضل في الله سبحانه وتعالى نبارك له من الشيخ رحمة الله عليه ده حديث concerning حق being victorious was explained with practical examples citing the example again with Allah Ta'ala's fadl of Mawlana Shazir Shaykh Sakriya Rahmatullahi in citing the example of Mawlana Thanwi Rahmatullahi that sometimes you don't know why you are on haq your heart will tell you but obviously this is a condition in a situation with people who are uh, whose hearts have been purified to a great extent. So it was explained. These people قَدْ أَفْلَحْ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا The hadith now in Quran Sharif Ayat What do you mean by purification of hearts? We have to find some some uh, reference in a Quran Sharif. Anyone can speak my heart is purified. We had people who say they don't observe hijab. Why? No, parda is in a heart. They say it every woman and they say parda is actually in a heart. Allah forbid. So that is why we put a Quran Sharif to restrict and harness our intelligence and our opinions. That your opinion conflicts with the Sharia. It can't be right. Otherwise, anyone will justify whatever they want to do. Any times you cannot, you cannot answer them ever adequately. You can't. It's impossible. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> a person used to eat, and as disgusting as it may sound, it's a, 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 a story which Monathan Rahmatullahi had mentioned. Or he must have also felt no good speaking about it. But nonetheless, he said it to, to explain and clarify to our minds that how, what opinion can do to you if you are not careful. A person is to eat his own excretion. Somebody, not somebody, people told him, how can you do this here? He said, it's not your business. When I ate it, it was halal. It came out of my stomach, it's halal. Prove it to me, it's haram that I'm eating. What are you going to tell him? You find me an answer. Logically, when I ate it, it's halal. It came out from my stomach. It's How can halal become haram after it comes out of my stomach? Prove it to me it's haram. Yes, in Napak is a different thing. And haram is something else. Prove it to me it's haram. The chicken I ate was slaughtered. Bismillah was recited. I ate it. Alhamdulillah. Then after I decided, no, I'm going to eat whatever came out, you prove it to me. Can somebody ever disprove this person? In a more, may Allah save us, I'm not going to say the other example. It's too, too, uh, I, I just don't have it in me. The point which we make is this year that opinions, experiences and majority and this and that holds no water in the Sharia. When we are, the Ummah is confronted by any developments, the first line of defense and the last line of defense is the Ulama. No Nabi, times before Nabi was sent, Allah Ta'ala said many Ambiya, the Nabi would be in the forefront by the agency of Mu'ajizad, supernatural actions he would confront and he would prove his uh, Nabuat a Nabi would only come down when a nation was horribly astray, totally astray. Nabi Sassam came at a time when humanity was at its utmost darkness people would get inherit their own mothers, the time Nabi Sassam came in this dunya, people would inherit and they would get their own mother and they would eat dead animals, they would fight over petty things, wars for generations and centuries, over petty things. The wars would be passed on as an inheritance. The father on his dying bed would call his children. He wouldn't tell his children, look after the family. He would say, don't stop the war that 
was started by your great grandfather. Make sure you carry on. Against that other tribe. So Nabi Sassam came and he mended the family ties and he stopped all these wars and all these customs and he came at the darkest hour. Musa Ali Salam, Nabi Sassam first. What was the in thing, the main thing amongst the Arabs at those days? Poetry. Small, small children at the click of fingers would compile a poem without thinking, no schooling, nothing. The Arabic language was in, is, a, is a magical language. So, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him a miracle that is until the day of Yom al Qiyamah, the Quran and Karim, which is in Arabic. Great, great warriors, researchers, scholars, uh, people like Umar Hazrat Umar Ta'ala Anhu, the moment they would listen to a few ayat, they would sit down, they would hold their heads, they would shake their heads, they would say, this is the hub. This is the hub. This here can never be poetry. Great poets would break their pins and say, we're not going to write poetry anymore. There's such, uh, uh, such words that have come, no one can match it. They Sabah Mu'allaqa. Sabah Mu'allaqa, every year they would have a huge feast, like a... Uh, what a convention or huge you know you have to speak bazaars and during that few days they would have uh, wrestling matches and they would have uh, they would worship the gods it was a, a celebratory period and then there was a committee whoever has got any poverty bring it they would bring it and according to what happens they would choose the seven best poems, Mu'allaqa, they would hang it from the walls of the Kaaba Sharif. Next year, poetry would be brought, anyone can match that one, yes, this one is better than that one, and they would remove the ones that were now defeated, if you can say, and put the new ones. Quran Sharif came, three, four ayats, no one could do anything, they just stayed. So Allah gave the Mojiza of the Quran and Karim and this was the Misalsim's weapon to prove that he is a Nabi. Alright. Similarly, Musa Islam's time there was magic. People would be would be professionals and experts at making magic. Uh, in the Quran Shif Allah says that uh, if you don't give instruction, they fajumi as Sahara to collect all the magicians from all the cities throughout Egypt. News was passed on. All the magicians come for this great event where they were going to confront Musa al -Islam. Allah Ta'ala gave Musa al -Islam two miracles. One, the stick, the other, his hand. Finish. End of the story with him. Isa al -Islam's time, it was medicine. Allah Ta'ala gave Isa al -Islam without any just reading and blowing paralyzed will become healthy the sick would be cured the blind would regain their eyesight and not only that he would instruct a person in a cover wake up the person would come out of the cover so they had their miracles with them they had their holy kitabs with them very few people, human beings, very few. Fama amana li Musa min qawmi illa dhuriyatam Quran Sharif ayat, very few would accept Islam. The ulama will always be in a similar situation. Allah Ta'ala would send or create or rise up that particular alim. Now this, the there's no Nabi coming. Nabi Sallallahu said, La Nabi Aminba, there's no Nabi. This responsibility of guiding mankind, at large it falls onto the entire Ummah. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. The entire mankind has to be guided and the Ummah is responsible for explaining and guiding them towards Islam. Uh, 
specifically the ulama if there is a real proper Islamic country with a proper Amir al-Mu'mini and a really very valid jihad not like this what is all over this is not jihad <laughs> Palestinian you think is jihad it's not jihad they're fighting for land <coughs> or for Indian Islam they fight for land you see them putting the Palestinians flags everywhere Palestine they, they, it's not so much for for Islam if it was for Islam then they would act in an Islamic way starting off with filling the masajid and especially Baytul Maqdis for every Salah we went to Baytul Maqdis Alhamdulillah Allah took us on more than one occasion for time, half a surf Zohar time one and a half surf Asr time one Maghrib time two and a half Isha also or three most you know how many surfs they are there? nothing more than 25-30 surfs huge masjid they playing soccer outside the masjid. Palestinians, those who are not Israelis, they playing soccer. They are screaming. They've got two teams. The Adhan is going. The Mas is going. They can't come. They can't come for Salah. You walk through the alleys there in the old city where Beitul Maqdis is. They are playing carrom board. They are playing dart games. They are playing uh, billiards and snooker and what and what. They are smoking hookah. They are all relaxing. You think, but hey, what is happening here, man? The ladies are shopping, the ladies come for Jumma namaz, they've got the jeans on, they've got the skippers on, but one burqa was just a little cloak thrown around them, they come with picnic baskets, they all stand next to me and they all read namaz. <laughs> Ask yourself, Allah Ta'ala don't make zulm on anyone. The children, there's no makkah, now Allah the topic Jamaat went little and they started little trying wherever they can. Uh, you look at the leaders of them. It's Abu Dhas and Abu Dhat. All the time looking forward to who? The United Nations, the AU, the EU. They have to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They go to the hotels where these people are. They eat the haram that is they sit on the same table where these people are drinking liquor. You think there will be any awe and respect when they're negotiating with them? Nothing. Nothing. So, coming back, the ulama's responsibility, we were saying, even at the time, if, if ever there is a proper jihad, Afghanistan is gone. Forget the Taliban. This is not the Taliban of all of this. They are begging America for food. They're begging, they're begging, please send food, send the food, send the food. I mean, Allah Ta'ala has promised He's going to give you the food if you have taqwa. So they are going wrong somewhere. Why are they kneeling and begging to be part of the broader international community and of the uh, United Nations? And it's, it's a different Taliban from the ones of before. That also, there's, no, there's nothing there. This is Shabab, all our groups from created by America. There's nothing in them. They bomb and they come and they bomb. Even Iran, with all the news about nuclear, it's all the it's the hugest fast in the dunya. They work on a five-year plan. They'll sign a deal, peace, peace. Then they carry on, no yes, no yes, no yes, and uh, bomb some way, kill a couple of people. But Iran will never ever launch one missile attack. Israel ever, 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 ever. The Iranian Revolution, 1979. It's almost 89, 43 years, coming close to half a century. Never have they launched one missile against Israel. They say no. They do, what they have done. They are. The, uh, the schemes are awesome. Quran says, Wakat makroom, makroom, wa'indale, makroom, wa'inkana, makroom, lita, zulam, in al-jibar. The Iranians are with the Americans and the Yehud to destroy the Sunni Muslims. Understand? They're not worried about Shias and all. They know these people can't really do much. They won't, they're not going to help, get help from the skies. Samawi. They also understand. Allah tell us help. God, they call Lord, whatever. They are worried about that part. That 
the Sunni Muslims are the ones that have got a formula for getting the Nusrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Destroy the Sunni, which are the Sunni countries, even if it's just in inverted commas, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Yemen, Algeria, Tunisia, these are by and large the Sunni countries, destroy them. So they got in Iran involved. Listen here, tend to come, you're going to take away all the oil from the Arabs. The Arabs can't see it. They leave Mecca and Medina and take everything over. You think Saudi Arabia is going to fight America? Nine uh eleven, -uh. they got a sword around the rulers' necks of Saudi Arabia. It, you know, you guys were responsible for 9-11. They can just ignite that particular subject. No, no, you people, wait, no, no, no. We're going to arrest you people. We're going to put you in an ICC, International Criminal Court, and we'll do this and we'll do that and whatever. It will be finished. They can't do anything. So to destroy the Sunni power, they have invaded or they've got a puppet situated all around. The real, real motivating factor that could in, you, unite the Ummah was Palestine. Everyone was still had Masjidah outside their heart. Now they have succeeded in infiltrating Hamas, if you can call it, in the PLO. And what they do, Israel bombs, Iran sends through the pipelines uh, aid, food aid, medical aid. The people are becoming now Shias. They say Iran is helping us. In South Africa also, oh, Iran is the only country standing up. Man. We can't uh, oppose Iran, you know. Iran is the only country in the world that stands up to America. They don't understand the Shia link with America that we are destroying. No, it's not just Palestine. They, those ayah, those particular uh, uh, exhortations that come in the Quran Karim of a genuine jihad. Now they say, no, the jihad was for that time. You can see how people are speaking like this here. The jihad, jihad till the day of Yom al Qiyam, Allah Ta'ala said, Rasul Asim said, right, finish. Now we understand what is happening there. So the ulama's role first and foremost, even if it is a proper Islamic country, proper jihad, they are not allowed to go for jihad. وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُ kafa. Allah Ta'ala says, it's not appropriate for all the mu'minin that they should go into jihad. A group must stay behind. And this brings us to a very interesting subject. They must study the deen. They must get expertise in Masalah Masail, in Fiqh. Liyatafaqahu fi deen. I'm using the same word from the Quran, actually. When the brothers return from jihad, they can warn them these are the laws and these are the restrictions and these are the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, deen. So that these people can again uh, come to uh, uh, keep on being uh, reminded that uh, we mustn't stray because when you're in jihad, you want to go, you want to go, you pumped up. The adrenaline is, is pushing. When you come back, hey, hold, 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 hold. You've got a wife and children now. Calm down. These are the rights. Make sure you're in the mass. Make sure you don't get carried away like these so-called mujahideen. They just put on camouflage clothing and, you know, camouflage. Hey, we are in jihad. We are going in jihad. But what about the rights of your parents? There are parents that are crying till today. The children just left without permission and gone and never ever to come back again. Now... You see what it can do? There are people, you know, Afghanistan, when it started, they were real, excellent, sincere people. And they also, the Americans, and the, the drug addicts came there, the Dhaka smokers came there. They also want to go in jihad. And, uh, but Allah Ta'ala protected the initial Taliban, the, the protection and nusrat of Allah Pak. Point being made is the ulama have a huge, the major, main thing for our alim is what? to protect the divine commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to preserve it and to propagate it. Remember, preserve it, no changes, not one mustahab, forget the sunnah and faras in a watch, but not even one of the what you call adab. This, you get faras, you get wajib, you get sunnah muakkada, you get sunnah ghair muakkada, you get mustahab, you get nafal, and you get 
right what you can call at the bottom, but it's, you can't even use the word bottom, it's part of the sharia, or at the bottom of the ladder is what it is called the adab. The adab, how to go about it. Similarly, on the other hand, you get haram, you get makruhe tahrimi, you get makruhe tamzihi, and thereafter uh, you get uh, uh, issues like uh, it is uh, not appropriate, uh, etc. Ne? The ulama that we are going to preserve that. Whether it is in business masala masail, Islamic banking can come with a million signatures. We are going to scale it not on a you, who you are. We are going to scale it on the Sharia. Who you are, that is Popehood and priesthood. We say this is the Quran Sharif Ayat, this is the Hadith. If you contradict it, then you bring the Quran Sharif Ayat and you bring the Hadith that says we are wrong. All right. Okay, coming back to the photography issue. They say no, it's digital. And they cite the example of the uh, Thanwar Akhlali was totally against loudspeaker system and he said Salah is not made. Mufti Shafi, beloved Khalifa, Mona Thanwar used to consult with him also on the Fatawa. He held the view, no, it is permissible. To and fro correspondence when Mona Thanwar said a few things, he said a few things, in an, and Mona Thanwar says, here, let's halt here now. We have said what we have said. We keep it at that. I've said what I've said. We keep it at that. We carry on with other issues. Mashallah, how nicely. No, no, no difference in a the relationship. Then obviously as time passed, uh, Mufti Shafi's fatwa uh, was more prevalent. Now you can't say photography is the same thing. Why? The actual crux of the loudspeaker system was this year. Is it the actual voice or not? That reaches the listeners. Whether in Salah, obviously in Salah mainly, is it the actual voice or not? Mona Thami said, you have to have the actual voice. He said it is the echo of that actual voice. All right. In the Sharia, there is no restriction or prohibition upon the sound, the level of the sound that you speak, it must be at a certain distinct or it mustn't be at a distinct. No problem with that. Whereas in photography, they say, no, this is the actual image. The other one says, no, it's a copy of the actual image. The point is, in the Sharia, the duplication of any creation, the raw, animate, is haram. Whether it is through camera, whether it is through painting, whether it is through a sketch, the picture itself, we're not speaking about the methodology, that picture itself is haram. Lika is haram. If somebody says, no, we just push the grapes or whatever it may be, we sit back, a button is pushed. A remote. The liquor comes out. We didn't manufacture the liquor. He say, no, you're not looking at the... He say, no, those times they used to squeeze it. It was around because they were squeezing it in a certain manner. Now there's no more that particular thing. We're doing it this way here. So it's halal. He say, no, the end product. Similarly with photography, and I can promise you, I can promise you I take an oath on the last name, the harm that photography is causing, the harm, it is never been recorded in the history of humanity. The amount of naked, nude pictures readily available on your fingertips, whether it's a child or an old man. But one, one press of a button, just one, they can offload tens of thousands, I use over tens of thousands, of nude women's photographs. Never in the history of mankind was it so easily available. And we know, all know what it does to the mind. South Africa, yesterday, day before yesterday, it was on the news. One of the highest level of child pornography, children watching pornography, is in South Africa. The minds are totally corrupted. What is that brain going to absorb, which at the age of 10 is so corrupted with filth? The root of it all, photography. <laughs>
come back. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Let's not play games with the Sharia. The one is you play games with the Sharia. What I'm saying will make sense to you. Hey, you know what, man? Let's look at it from this angle, man. I ask every single parent in this country, in this world, are you feeling safe with your child having access, unrestricted access, uh, with his own cell phone? Even a non Muslim would say, no, I, I, I'm not happy about this here. Why? There's games there, it can be educational, it is an encyclopedia, research can be done. So why not? They say, hey, you know what, that thing is too bad. He's got access, just as he's got access to what has been mentioned now, he's got access to the weirdest, most perverse forms of lust that a human being, forget a human being, a, a animal cannot even condone. He's going to see that. His mind is gone. Respect is gone. Shame is gone. He will want to explain what his own not only sisters, even with dogs, they call it bestiality. In animals, huh? Now you ask him, we look now back at the beauty of Islam and hey, wait man, wait, 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 wait. But this makes, besides now the Quran and Hadith, which I've explained already about, this makes a lot of sense man. This thing cannot be halal. If smoking is haram, if smoking is haram, there's benefit in smoking. He yeah, has a lot of benefit. The economy grows, factories, factories produce the cigarettes, machinery for the cigarettes, the uh, packaging of it, the transportation of it, jobs are created, uh, people chill out, uh, people uh, just want to calm their nerves. Uh, so what's a big problem? What's a big problem? No, you don't look at the benefits that I've enumerated now. You look at the bigger problem. Hey, what about the lung cancer? What about the TB? What about this? What about that? To the extent that non-Muslim companies are now forced by government, every packet of cigarettes, smoking is injurious to health. Compare smoking with pornography. Pornography is infinitely worse. They try and discourage all over. The government comes budget time, they call it the sinner's tax. <laughs> every cigarette, one day, now it's every year, you just have to pay tax, more tax, maybe we can stop you. Pornography, there's nothing to stop them. You can say age restriction, does it ever help? Every day you will find articles, really it's heartbreaking, married couples, you, the couple broke up, the husband blackmails her, his ex-wife, put all whatever he had videoed, she and Zamana Jahiliya allowed everything to happen. Everything is on that net. Islam is the only religion in the world that can tell you, such that can, that, that can identify the root cause of the destruction of families and human honor. And that is what it is photography. It is the only religion. Not the Jewish, not the Christian, not Buddhists, not the atheists, no one. Only Islam, obviously atheists don't have any religion. Islam is the only one that can come to terms in everything in life. Our deen will identify that particular spark that leads to the destruction of morals, respect, decency, uh, training a human being to be res responsible in life. Only Islam has got its system. Everything else is just by the way. That's why you find children that are doing hips. If they are exposed to television, videos, they can't learn. The mind is corrupted. If they have cell phones, and then you can't get it away from them. That's a whole huge subject on its own. They are so addicted and they are such experts. They conceal, they lie, they deceive, they fabricate stories. They, uh, they will hide their cell phones in such places that you can't find it. They've got such passwords, they've got such friends, they're into Satanism. Remove the photographs. Even Satanism can't do your harm. What is Satanism? You see all the pictures, the tattoos, the photographs, the slaughtering, sacrificing to Lucifer and what and what. They see all this. If you just read it, it doesn't have any effect. Come, I tell you one last thing. 
with the father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala be praised, ne? Allah ta'ala shukar. There's a saying, one picture paints a thousand words. One picture is worth a thousand words. You'll understand why Islam says it is haram. One picture, it can just look attractive to the young boy or young girl. A thousand words can never remove that image from the mind. Nabi Salaam himself once entered into his home uh, I'm trying to recall the exact uh, situation but be as it once it told us that uh, Aisha radiallahu anh, oh Aisha my gaze fell on a certain image remove it that image why it played on my mind while I was performing Salah. You see a nude woman is a man, nothing is going to happen to you. G.S. So, Nabi Salaam himself, the Sharia is, it's not our, you know, what one can call, you know, it's something of a hobby. We must get people to become Muslims and we must do this here and give dawa and set up the Khilafat movement and, you know, we must go back. Those are all glitches by come down to ground and say let us address the th issues and the things that are destroying our families. You are, have no other option but if you are sincere to speak with a true tongue, to hear with a true tongue and to see with a true tongue that yes, the sense of television is in our house, this video is in our house, our house is being corrupted. Husband, wife, family said they look at all the scenes, haram scenes. Then they say, you know, we got so much problems, we can't get along. Everyone is fighting with everyone. There's no burqat. Husband again lost his job, but we don't think. We it's numbed us. The, our lifestyle has numbed us. It is like uh, it has overtaken our occult and intelligence. The way by we can be honest, forget what other people, but ourselves even. We don't want to admit it. What comes, Janaz is in the room, does anyone want to watch TV? Now why suddenly, what happened? It's, you know, it's educational. What happened to all the educational part? Why you don't want to uh, keep the TV on in the next room, forget in the room where the Janaz is? Something is needling you to say, hey, you know what, this thing is, it's not nice to have a TV on. No one is going to say, but, you know, it's the jetter. Jazakallah khairah. Does anyone say?